What's going on guys? It's Sensei Adam. Welcome back to another Brawl Stars video. And since we just had another round of balance changes, and even before that, we had some changes to the attack sizes of some brawlers like Nita, Piper, and Colt. So I figured, I think my previous tier list is already outdated, so why not just make another one and give you guys the tips and tricks on which brawlers are the best and the worst for the current meta. But before we do get started with the tier list guys, I do have to announce that I just partnered myself with the Discord server called Mobile United. Basically, if you're into Brawl Stars, into Clash Royale, Fortnite Mobile, or any other mobile game in general, I think that's going to be really good for our community. Basically, if you're just looking for people to chat with, or looking for strategies or other people to play with, like I'll just leave the link for that down in the description below and also on the screen over here. But if you guys also want to catch me, maybe I'll play some games with you guys for people in Mobile United. I'll, I'm also on that server myself, so yeah, you guys can catch me over there as well. But now going back to the tier list. If this is the first time you guys have ever watched one of my tier list videos, basically how I do it is I go over from the worst and the best brawlers and rank each one of them in an individual tier. So F is basically like the worst brawlers in the game. They're like not useful in almost any facet of the game. And then the S tier is like the overpowered brawlers. They absolutely dominate the game in the current meta. And in this tier list in general, I'm probably going to go over some more mechanical assets of the game rather than just pure statistics, just because I feel that's why the current gap between the S and the F tier is really, really big. Like, if you, got, you guys are seeing so many more brawlers from the S tier rather than everybody else, just because of the current mechanics of how the game is played. So, starting off with the F tier, and at number 19 is, of course, Mortis. Now you guys generally know how I feel about Mortis after the landscape and auto aim update. Basically, as long as auto aim is in the game, in its current form, like in its overpowered form, if you play Mortis and get close to any brawler, like short range brawler, tanks, or even long range brawlers such as Rico, Crow, or Colt, basically, yeah, he's not gonna do very well. You always feel like you have that chip on your shoulder when you're playing Mortis that if I go in, they're just gonna auto aim me to death, but if I try and like sneak up on them, yeah, it's not gonna work because they're just gonna pummel me down as I go up there. So generally, I feel Mortis is almost unusable at this point. He's found like some usage in Brawl Ball, but I just feel like in the current meta, you have to play all long range in Brawl Ball, and Mortis just gets the short end of the, end of the stick over there. On top of that, you just have to think of how much the mechanics of the game have changed. Let's take somebody like Colt, whose attack size did decrease a little bit, but not to like its original size. So Mortis, he kind of has a harder time trying to juke his opponent's shots, even as he's trying to get closer to them. So I feel like even if they give him a ton of buffs, he's still going to be underpowered as long as those features are still remaining. The things I think might make him as useful is try and buff him a lot, especially on his attack range. Like let's say... Maybe try and give him like a 4 tile attack range. Right now I believe his is 2.66 which is way too low especially like with the current ranged meta. And my last entry into the F tier is El Primo. Now of course El Primo is going to be pretty low just because currently it's a long range meta. But the one issue that he has mechanically is his attack width is so small. If you see it, it it's kind of compares to the same size as somebody like Colt or even Rico or Piper or Brock. But basically he has such a small range that he just isn't as useful. Even comparing him to other tanks, he's laughably bad. Just because he can't sneak up on other people and use auto aim and instantly do that damage. Even if you get close to your opponent and start hitting that auto aim, they have a chance to escape and only take like one or two out of the four punches that he deals. So I feel like they have to do something to make El Primo useful again. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the D tier. These are brawlers that can be useful in like some small certain situations, but overall, you're not seeing them too much in the meta. So, I think I'm going to go over all these brawlers at once, because wow, how the mighty have fallen, right? From the start of this update to now, all of the shotgunners, basically Bull, Daryl, and Shelly, they've all gone down a ton. You almost never see them play everywhere except like a few small instances but overall whenever you see one of these brawlers you instantly think wow i'm gonna get a free win because yeah if you use long range they can't even get close to you the one issue that i think they're facing and a lot of other brawlers are facing this as well is just because their attack sizes weren't increased like the long range brawlers were so let's say you're trying to go in and get close to let's say a colt 
you're not gonna have a good time just because it's a very very hard to juke those shots just because now it spreads out a lot more than it did before so even with their increased speed they're gonna have a hard time juking getting close and they're gonna just hit one out of six shots on you and you're not gonna regen so when you get close for the most part you're gonna have low health and they're gonna finish you off really fast even in maps where before I believe they were still gonna be very useful such as Snake Perry or Sapphire Plains where there's a lot of bushes what they can hide in, I feel like it's been taken over by long range brawlers plus a bow where like the bow can see all of the bushes while the long range brawlers just stay back and snipe people to oblivion so even then they're not as useful on those maps so yeah I don't know what they're gonna do about these brawlers. But now let's move on to the seats here. These are brawls that I think can be good to dominate in one specific game mode, which for the most part is smash and grab, but in other game modes, like, they're almost non-usable. They can be used in some other game modes such as Brawl Ball or Bounty, but for the most part, you're never gonna find them there. And at number 14 is Nita. Now, in this last update, Nita did receive a buff, which she desperately needed just to keep up with the pace of those long-range brawlers. But even now, I still think it's a long-range meta, and she kind of struggles just getting up and getting close to those long-range brawlers. So I just feel like Nita, she really strives when it's like a tank meta, so she can actually get close to them, charge up that bear, and use it to get the opponents to go back. But overall, in the current meta, I just don't feel like she's the best brawler to use. You're going to see her struggling against some long range brawlers such as Crow, Cole, or even Ricochet. And yeah, I just don't feel like she's great. But I would say she's very much usable in a map like Crystal Cavern or Deep Hollows where she can just go to a side and keep control of that side and not even let your opponents get close to the middle. Number 13 is Spike, and I would say he's in the same boat as Nita, where he just thrives in a tank meta, where he can just trap it, the tanks inside of his super and just blast them and load another super. But with the long range meta, he struggles to try and get close to those long range brawlers such as Cole or Rico. And when he gets there, he's usually going to be low on, on HP, and you're going to have to go back. So I just feel like Spike, if it's a tank meta, which like you guys saw, the tanks are all in the D tier, he would thrive. But just getting close to those long range brawlers, especially with their new spread, is kind of tough. At number 12 and number 11, I have both of the healers. Now, as you guys know, these brawlers are made for smash and grab. They're made to be the gem carriers just because of their healing potential and their ability to heal whenever they like have a situation where they're about to lose all the gems, they can just heal themselves or their teammates. The problem with these two brawlers though and their role is you're seeing a lot more people just using Crow as a gem carrier rather than these two brawlers. Just because he has a lot more escape potential with this super and more attacking potential as well. So if the opponent has a lot of gems, you can just use your super to jump right on top of them and take their gems. So yeah, Crow is extremely strong as a gem carrier so you're seeing a lot less of these two brawlers on that position. Alright, we've reached the halfway point in the B tier on the tier list. So basically, the B tier, it's for brawlers that I believe are really, really extremely dominant on one game mode. Or, they're like great at one game mode, but can, they can also branch out into other game modes and be playable on those. So, at number 10, we have Jessie. Now, Jessie, I am kind of iffy on her, just because I know she's extremely dominant as a mid or gem carrier in Smash and Grab. Just because in the current meta where it's all about long range, if you put a turret behind a wall where the opponent has to go up and try to shoot it, it's kind of tough for them to do that. But on the other hand, if they do break that wall, it's kind of tough for her to keep her turret alive just because they're going to be able to shoot it down with no resistance at all. But overall though, I believe it comes down to how fast you can get that turret up. Because if you can get it like as fast as possible and get it early on in the match and control the middle and push your opponents back to their spawn, it's really easy to spawn trap them in their base, not let them even come close to controlling the middle. But if you take a while, like five, six gems into the match, you're going to kind of struggle and maybe you're going to get pushed back to your spawn and the same thing is going to happen to your team. So it all depends on if you put it, like if you put Jessie in the hands of an experienced player, you're going to thrive with her and she's a really good mid. And at number 9, we have Bo. Now I have to put a little asterisk on this brawler, just because if you don't have a max, then he should probably be more like D tier and not B tier. And that's because his vision, his star power is so strong. He's almost essential in any map that features a ton of grass, such as Snake Prairie, Sapphire Plains, Terracotta Square, and any map that has a lot of grass. 
So yeah, if you don't have a max bow, you're kind of going to struggle getting him up to 500 trophies or higher. But if you don't, any map that has grass, you're going to need a max bow. That's why I believe he's, he belongs in the B tier. Just because, yeah, he's required on those maps. You can't play those maps without having a max bow. It's like almost impossible. Moving on to number 8 is Barley. Now, Barley is kind of like an interesting brawler. Just because he's really strong on paper, but in practice, he's not really the best. Just because of the attack joystick and how it functions. Let's say somebody's right next to you. A lot of the times, they're going to struggle like either canceling your attack or just hitting the person right at your feet. And that's the one thing that gives Barley a big disadvantage. Before you could shoot right at your feet, but now you can't really do that. Secondly, it's kind of pretty hard to predict exactly where you're going to hit your opponents. So let's say like somebody's really far away and you're trying to swipe and hit them really quick. But you accidentally swipe like a little bit wrong and then they just get away. But if you knew if you could tap to shoot right on that brawler, you would have gotten them. That's like where Brawly currently stands. Just because if you get the attack right, it's really hard for your opponents to dodge. Just because the bottle flies really fast. But on the other hand, if you don't get it right, you're going to miss. So it's a hit or miss with Barley. Last but not least, on the B tier and coming in at number 7 is Piper. Now, I don't think since Piper was released, she's had this much dominance in Bounty as she does right now. Basically, in every single map that you see, she's almost a must play. Especially in those long range maps such as Shooting Star, Star Gold, or Terracotta Square. Like, you're seeing Pipers everywhere. Even in Snake Prairie, where before, you wouldn't, you never think of playing a Piper since you can't see where she's shooting. Even now, she's being used on that map and dominating it. So yeah, Piper, I would say she's only usable in Bounty, but there she's a must play. And that's why I put her at number 7 and, and at the top of the B tier. Alright, let's move on over to the A tier. These are brawlers that I think are extremely dominant on one game mode, but they're very much usable on other game modes as well. And at number 6, we have Brock. Now you guys know that I basically think Brock is kind of like a more versatile version of Piper where if he's somebody's close to him, he can still dish out the same amount of damage as if somebody's further away from you. He's not as dominant as Piper is in Bounty, just because in Bounty you stay a little bit more long range, so Piper's extreme damage at longer ranges comes in, in handy a little bit more than Brock's versatility, but if you bring him to other game modes such as Brawl Ball or even Heist where he's being used a lot more than throwers over there, I think he's more versatile and he's usable a lot more often than Piper is. Moving on to number 5, we have Terra. Now I should go without saying that Terra is the best brawler to use in Brawl Ball. I don't think that's even a question. Just because a lot of people in Brawl Ball just clump up, so it's very easy to use your super and drag in a lot of people at once, and then you can just go ahead and use the auto aim and finish all of them off at once. And your super can even be used to break a wall if you really need it in a dire situation. Not only that though, I'm kind of seeing Terra being used more sort of like a Nita style brawler in Smash and Grab where they become aggro and control one side of the map such as in Crystal Cavern where they just stay on the corner and wait for people to come in, lose their shield and start shooting. And she's even more effective at area control just because her range is a lot longer than Nita's. So let's say you're going against a Rico, you don't have to get as close to them to inflict some damage and prevent them from regening. Or if you have your super as well and they're all clumping together, you can just throw it, use your attack and you're going to kill all of them with the gems. So I just think Terra is in a really good spot right now. And last but not least, on the A tier net, coming in at number 4 is Dynamite. And oh my goodness guys, you have no idea how confusing this brawler is. One moment, he's like one of the worst brawlers in the game just because of the joystick to shoot. And the next, they make him so overpowered that if you know how to use him, he's so deadly. I kind of feel like Supercell is going about this the wrong way on how they balance this. Just because the joystick to shoot was never meant to be very comfortable with these throwers and it's very inaccurate. So I kind of think like they were thinking, so if you, since it's really random, we'll just make them really strong so if somebody's extremely good with these throwers, like they're gonna be unstoppable. And especially with Dynamax, since his attacks do a lot more damage compared to Barley, I would say if you are even remotely close to hitting your target, they're not gonna be able to juke it at all. And it, that applies so much more with this super, where you don't even have to get come close to hitting it. Like, since it goes on the ground, it explodes so quickly, even if you're remotely close on throwing it near the enemy, it's gonna hit it. So, 
Overall, I would say dynamic if you put them in the right hands on somebody that actually knows how to use the joystick to shoot and they're, they're extremely accurate. I would say he's one of the strongest brawlers in the game right now. Now that we got that out of the way, we'll move on to the S tier. And I can't stress this enough, guys. The gap between the A tier and the S tier is huge. Like, it's so big that you're seeing these three brawlers in almost every single game mode and using almost any comp because they're just so overpowered and so broken that you just have to use them in order to win. And in theory, I think this issue stems from when Supercell increased the attack width of all of the long range brawlers while not really changing anything about the maps in scale. So now they kind of, people kind of have a hard time dodging these brawlers just because you can give them all the speed that they want, but the map sizes haven't increased. So there's less space for people to actually hide in, like if you put it into proportion with the bullet sizes of these brawlers. And coming in at number three, we have Colt. Now, of course, Colt benefits from all of the stuff I just said before. His bullet size is still pretty big compared to what it was before the landscape update, and the maps are still the same size, so he benefits a lot from that. You're seeing Colt being used in every single game mode, especially in Brawl Ball, Bounty, and in Heist. He's like one of the best brawlers in all of those game modes. In Smash and Grab, he isn't used as much just because that game mode has a lot more variety, but I still say he's very dominant in that game mode. And coming in at number two is Crow. Now I kind of noticed that Crow always benefits when it's a long range meta, just because there's a lot less health for him to have to take out, and whenever he just gets like half of his opponent's HP, he can just go ahead and jump and finish them off. And speaking of jumping, Crow greatly benefits from abusing how the current auto aim works. Just because let's say I use my jump to jump on top of the opponents. For the most part, people right now they just when they see that they're just going to spam their auto aim thinking that it's going to start trying to hit the crow in the air. But that's not how it works. When crows in mid air, you have to use manual aim in order to pre-fire and try and get at least one hit off on crow before he lands and just starts spamming his own auto aim. But for the most part, people don't know how to do this, so they're just going to spam the auto aim and waste their ammo on the other opponents, and when the crow lands, they're not going to have anything to use, so crow's just going to spam auto aim and you're going to be dead. And other than that though, you're also seeing a lot more of crow in a game mode like smash and grab where he's being used a lot more as a gem carrier, and also in brawl ball where he's being more of like the control brawler, and since he can just keep people from regening, yeah, he works out very well there as well. And of course, at number one, and the king of the current Brawl Stars meta is Rico. And I can't stress this enough, you're seeing Rico in almost every single team comp, in almost every single game mode. Even in one like Heist where you almost never see a Rico, just because his spread is so big, especially with his range increase, like it just seems like he's so overpowered. And there's two reasons why I think Rico is extremely strong right now. Number one is because of how his bullet spread works. Just because they increase his bullet size and how the spread naturally works, let's say your opponent is trying to hide behind a wall. They're gonna have a hard time doing so just because now the bullets for the most part, they cover that whole section of the map rather than before having a small chance that it wouldn't hit you just because they were still kind of close together. So yeah, I don't know how they're gonna fix that. The only way I see if they make like the maps each individual block be a little bit bigger just so it counteracts how that works and making like be, you be able to hide in more parts of the map rather than just having Rico be able to snuff you out every time. And number two is just because people kind of don't know how Rico's exact range is because if you shoot the wall, every time it bounces, it goes a little bit further. So you can't really predict how far you should stay away from that Rico before you're gonna get hit. But yeah guys, that's my tier list as of April 12th, 2018. What do you guys think about it? Do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? Is there a few brawls that you'd switch around? Or a few brawls that you think I misplaced? I'd love to hear your opinions down in the comment section below. But anyways guys, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe for more daily Brawl Stars content. And also guys, sorry I haven't uplo been uploading like as often as I used to. Just because my finals for my college are coming soon, so I'm going to be a little bit more focused on studying up rather than uploading video. But after the month of April where I don't have as much schoolwork, you guys can expect a lot more videos and more live streams to come. So make sure to subscribe. And I'll see y'all next time. Peace.